differentiate between myelinated and non myelinated axon dendrites and axons rods and cones thalamus and hypothalamus cerebrum and cerebellum so students here are two different structures we have to write the differences between these the first one myelinated and non myelinated axons so here in the picture we can see there are two neurons the difference in these two neurons are the axons of one neuron is covered by the myelin sheet which is secreted by the schwann cells and the axon of another neuron is free of this myelin sheet so this neuron's axon is called non myelinated axon and this neuron's axon is called myelinated axon now the myelinated axon it will help increase in the rate of the transmission of nerve impulse so here the neurons the impulse jump from one node to another the axon on which the myelin sheet is absent is called node of ranvier so this nodes will be present at the regular intervals on the length of the axon and in such a neuron the electrical impulse jumps from one node to another so the rate of transmission of nerve impulse will be faster whereas an axon it is carried throughout the length of the axon and therefore the rate of impulse will be slow when compared to myelinated axon so here it is faster here it is slow the myelin axon has been covered by a sheet called myelin sheet the sheet is absent in the neuron the node of ranvier is present between the myelin sheets it is a area of the axon which is not covered by the myelin sheet so such a node of ranvier is absent on the, the non myelinated axon so these neurons is found in the brain spinal cord the cranial and the spinal nerves few of the cranial and spinal nerves now non myelinated axons is found in the autonomous and somatic neural system the periphery nervous system it is divided into autonomic and uh, somatic nervous system so here the neurons are non myelinated the schwann cells are present on the myelin sheet which secretes the myelin sheet so here on the myelinated axon we can see the nucleus of the schwann cells so these cells will secrete the myelin sheets so in a normal or non myelinated axon these schwann cells are absent so these are the differences between myelinated axon and non myelinated axon the next one is dendrites and the axons the nerve cell has got two regions one is the cell body which has got the nucleus and the cell organelle cytoplasm and the other one is the cell processing unit which includes the dendrites and the axons so dendrite is a small projection arising from the neuron head so from here it, a small branches arises and these projections or branches are called dendrites and it conducts the nerve impulse towards the cell body from here the nerve impulse is transferred towards the cell body axon is a single long projection that conducts the nerve impulse away from the cell body to the next neuron from here the nerve impulse is carried so the axon carries the information away from the cell body to the next neuron the next neuron which is located here it will be carried so these are the difference of dendrites and axons so in dendrites nissl granules are present so in the dendrites we can find the presence of nissl granules so these are absent in the axons so dendrites are always non myelinated that means they are not covered by the myelin sheet in axons some axons of neurons can be covered by myelin or some are free so axons can be myelinated or non myelinated whereas dendrites are always non myelinated so these were the differences between dendrites and axons the next one is the rods and the cones so the rod cells and the cone cells so these are the receptors the pigment cells present in the photoreceptors that is in the retina we can find the rod cells and the cone cells so they are responsible for the vision so the rods are responsible for twilight vision and black and white vision and the night vision cones are responsible for the day vision and the color vision now the rods have got visual pigments they are called as visual purple pigment rhodopsin and the cones have got visual violet pigments called iodopsin 
So here now the disc on the rod cells and cone cells contains the visual pigment. The rod cells have got rhodopsin and the cone cells have got iodopsin. The rods are photoreceptor cells in the retina that are sensitive to the dim light. Now these cells are sensitive to the dim light and the cone cells, they are the photoreceptor cells in the retina, they are sensitive to the bright light. So during the daytime when the light is bright, the cone cells gets activated and the vision, so the daylight vision is due to the cone cells and during the evening or the night when the light is dim, the rod cells gets activated. So the twilight vision is due to the rod cells. So these are difference between rods and cones. Next one, thalamus and hypothalamus. Now these two regions, the thalamus and hypothalamus, they are present in the forebrain. They are the part of the forebrain. So thalamus is a part of the forebrain that receives no impulse of pain, temperature, touch, etc. and conducts them to the cerebral hemisphere. Actually, thalamus acts as a relay station. So any impulses from the organs first comes to the thalamus and then goes to the respective part of the forebrain. And from the forebrain, the motor neurons first relay into the thalamus and then it is passed to the respective organ. So it acts as a relay station and uh, so it receives the no impulse of pain, temperature, touch. Whereas hypothalamus is a part of the forebrain. So this is the hypothalamus part of the forebrain. It controls involuntary functions such as hunger, thirst, sweating, sleep, temperature, temperature regulation, fatigue, etc. So it is a center for emotion, the happiness, the anger, the anxiety, fear. So these emotion centers are present in hypothalamus. It is called as master clock. Because it controls the sleep and the wake moment, the hungry, the thirst. So all these centers are present in the hypothalamus. So it also acts as a homeostatic center which regulates the temperature, the sweating. All these centers comes under hypothalamus. So these were the differences between thalamus and hypothalamus. The next one is cerebrum and cerebellum. So cerebrum. It is a part of the forebrain, the biggest part of the forebrain and cerebellum, this portion which is also called as little brain, it belongs to hindbrain. So cerebrum is a part of forebrain, it controls the voluntary functions. It is a place where the intelligence, willpower, memory centers reside. So here it is a center for intelligence, memory, reasoning. All these uh, sensory receptors are present in the cerebrum and it also controls the voluntary functions. The cerebellum, it is a part of the hindbrain. This controls the voluntary function as well and it uh, controls the equilibrium. So the body posture, the voluntary movements or the fine movements like playing a guitar or a violin. So all these uh, fine movements of the body will be controlled by the Cerebellum. So, cerebrum and cerebellum. Cerebrum is mainly controlled with the intelligence, memory, thinking, reasoning abilities. Cerebellum controls the voluntary movements like walking, moving, running, playing guitar, maintaining the body posture, equilibrium. So, these centers are present in cerebellum. So, these were the difference between myelinated and non myelinated, dendrites and axons, rods and cones, thalamus and hypothalamus cerebrum and cerebellum.